Okay, uh, welcome back everybody. Uh, as promised, uh, today we are going to talk about and take a look at how the rocks are placed in the scene and how they are integrated. To warn you up front, it's a little bit of a back and forth process once we created the camera, which is animated of course, we need to reposition the rocks. But I just wanted to make sure to show you the basic approach that I took to bring in the rocks, yeah, to make it look nice and uh, yeah we can take it from there so there are a lot of elements that i've created in the scene and then i had to adjust them based on other elements that were created like the camera for example later on the lights and the tone mapping are playing together like or depending each other directly as well so this is an an ongoing adjustment process in this scene but let's zoom out a little bit so to take a look what we have here so already said that we have this nice area with with all the rocks here we can go into placing the the rocks and let me quickly import the rocks so you see how i place them eventually and this is great because we have them as a reference now right and you can see already that this is are some of the rocks <laughs> so quite a bit of them um, and you can see how nicely that integrates and that you don't really you aren't really able to tell, especially with a little bit of depth of field, you're not able to tell if, if, if this rock is part of the HDR, where the transition between the HDR and the actual rocks are. But let's turn them off again and take a look at import one and, and see how we can actually do it. It's pretty easy, so yeah, let's just give it a try. Uh, we'll click import and go to the location where the rocks are stored and as, you, as, you, as I said those rocks are from Turbo Squid. I'll link them in the description box again so you can download them, them yourself as well. But yeah, uh, let's start with L with that one and we are going to take the FBX. So you could either choose OBJ or FBX or you could even go via Max and, and do, do your own thing. But um, I went for the FBX and the L one so let's import that. Um, not changing anything here because this is pre-tessellated, so we don't need to. And you can see that we have this black piece of rock in the scene. But let's to, uh, change the, uh, the the base color of the material that is created to um, to white. And it is not that sophisticated, right? <laughs> it's a, a piece of geometry, not very highly tessellated, not many details. Uh, but we're going to work with the maps to create a nice asset out of it. Okay, so now let's load the maps um, and we'll start with a diffuse texture just to get the, the general uh, map in. So open and go to the, the cliff pack and then to maps and then we have L. So let's go for that one. Um, you might ask yourself why we have a copy of that and that's because I've changed it a little bit uh, because there are a lot of like yellow spots on it. Um, and I didn't want to have that, so I went into Photoshop and changed, reduced the, the yellow values um, of the map itself. So I'm using this map, but you can easily just do that by going into Photoshop. And maybe it's fitting to your environment as well um, with the yellow spots. It looks nice. It's just, it, yeah, it wasn't the same, the same look of rocks that I had in the rest of my scene in the HDR. It's almost the same map, only a little bit different. Um, and you can see that it is... It's coming in nicely now, so it's already mapped. It Usually it's starting in Triplanner, so usually you would get it like that. And you can already see that it's not the right mapping mode, so what you have to do is go to Mapping Type and change it to UV. Uh, the rocks are already nicely UV laid, laid out, so you need to do anything here on that side besides loading the maps. And then just go through and do the same for the other maps as well. Yeah, something that's important, you just need to do that mapping type once and it will be adapted to the other maps automatically. So go for the glossy uh, map next. Uh, so we're choosing the spec, yeah, the black, black grayish one. And as you can see, UV is already applied, so we don't need to do anything here. Then we have, we're skipping roughness. We have a, a bump map um, that we can use as well. Let's go here, uh, same approach, open. And for bump, you can choose whether you use the normal map or whether you use the the height map that they ship with it. So I use the the normal map for that scene, and you can see that it looks better and better. 
And yeah, that's basically how it is set up already. So as you can see, it is not very obvious that it's not part of the scene, right? Uh, would it put it put it that way because it's not 100% integrated yet and it doesn't look 100% nicely because there are still some steps that we need to to do but you can see that it's generally working already so let's just move them a little bit rotate them a little bit as you can see it's it's floating right now so something that we have to play with is how we have them intersect with the um, the shadow plane on the ground because that's what's going to create the shadow and the shadow is actually going to create an impression of this element being on top of the the HDR the HDR floor. So let's put it here just as an example, right? Um, you'll we're not going to go through all of the rocks. I'm just going to show you how to create one. And then you can position and create the others as you like. So it's already working quite nicely, as you can see here. Looks good. Um, one tip is if you, because I'm planning to do a lot of, or some shots like that, I'm using some of the ones with the 8K resolution uh, for the front. Um, or position them where I need high quality textures. And others that only have 4K resolution, I can put them like in the background and stuff. So take a look at that or think about that when you position your rocks as well to have a, the, the, the best result later on. So that is fine already. Let's take a look here. Something that we could do. It's not so obvious here because it already integrates nicely. But you can see that there's like a yellowish tint to the, the rocks in the HDR. And to map that a little bit better. We can just go into the material diffuse and glossy color. Just change that slightly to um, to that rock color. So it's a warm white. Let's not cover the rock so we see what we're doing. And you can see that this is just multiplying the color on top of the texture. Uh, you need to stay in a very bright level. So just a slight ad uh, adaption because otherwise you're overriding the the texture as you can see now the texture is not visible anymore because we're going too dark right uh, but oh and i changed it to red that's not the that wasn't the idea so it should be something orangey and in yeah let's just do it like like that no oh, maybe a little bit more on that side okay so you can see this might be more needed for other rock types that you're integrating Something that's important as well is that we need to light bake them. And I want to show that to you with that one example. So right now you can see that there's no contact shadow, although they are intersecting here, let's say with the uh, shadow plane and everything, right? So um, it doesn't look proper now. Uh, but what we need to do is we turn on our light again, because that's always on, like this is the sunlight. This is always on when we bake light, because this is the light situation that we want to bake. Uh, into any object, if it's the car or if it's the rocks or the, the shadow plane or whatever. And then we go to, we select the shadow plane. Uh, so you can hold shift and just click onto the floor. You'll select the shadow plane automatically. And then uh, control shift, select the rock. And then go to bake light and shadows. Small trick here. We want to use the same settings as for for the last baking. And I would have to set it up now and go to textures and so on and so forth. But what I can do as well, I just select the shadow plane, which already has the light baking on it from last time. And then I can just go to settings and load from node. And as I have selected the shadow plane, which already has the settings from our last baking approach, it will just load it. So now um, I have all the settings, so I just need to click on calculate basically. Uh, again, I have the shadow plane selected, shift control select the rock as well and then go to calculate all and and calculate the light onto both uh, the shadow uh, plane and the rocks and this may take some time for the computation so i'll see you in a bit and here we are again uh, with our light baked rocks and you can see that um, if we zoom in closely you can see that we even need to adjust that a little bit so that's that's one thing because you can see that there is this um, yeah um, shadow artifact.
but you can also see that it's integrated way way better now um, let's ignore that for now because it's not going to be seen later on or you could also place you could also place an additional rock formation in front here which we most likely are going to do anyways um, but yeah it already looks looks pretty nicely if you take a look to the spot which I just talked about there is this one millimeter or two uh, that that is a problem here um, something that we can do and this is why this is happening as you can see this is because of the height of the shadow plane and I'll usually put that to one which is basically one millimeter so nobody is going to see that right like this is um, yeah there's not much that that's going to give it away uh, because it's a very small um, element field whatever so again let's go to uh, pre-computed elimination and take a look what we baked and you can see there's the contact shadow uh, there's shadow um, yeah self shadowing in baked in already so it's a nice nice effect something that you might have realized is if I'm moving the rock now so if I decide to put it somewhere else I need to rebake it so actually when I created the scene I rebaked rocks and shadow plane maybe 30 times uh, so this is a bit of a process because you're going to load in the next rock and then later on as I already said you're going to create the camera flights and maybe you want to have a certain look or just being visible in a certain edge of your camera shot and that's why you need to reposition them slightly later on but I think for the basic layout uh, that that's the the best approach and yeah if we take a look at how this looks finally of course now we have this wrong shadow um, but let's quickly recalculate because I can just cut here and edit it uh, so it looks nicely so see see you in a second okay so as you can see we have the the perfect shadows on the shadow plane again uh, yeah that's yeah just had to to rebake that so let's take a look at the lower part so below the scene actually as well and you can see it's a bit like an iceberg so it's only the tip is visible for some of them others are visible completely so that's up to you to play around with and as I said, in the, I think I said it in the first video already, this is a way to nicely be able to yeah, change the appearance of the rocks as well. But yeah, you can see it's up to you. It's up to you to composite that. Um, I did it that way. Um, and to be fair, as I said, I didn't do that out of nothing. I did that. Um, I started the process to like make a nice transition between the rocks and cover some of the transitions between the HDR dome like where it's going up from the floor so to cover some stuff up there but yeah basically it's it's was just based on how I wanted to to have the scene look uh, but also how I planned the camera angle so I already planned for a, a camera shot like that like this for example um, also from the front so as you can see I've tried to use them to create a bit of parallax as well so that they appear to be the foreground and the background is um, by the HDRI. This is up to you. Uh, again, I'm not anticipating anybody to recreate the scene. So just take the tips and, and uh, use them for the scene that you're going to create. But you can see that if we're zooming out, uh, there's a lot of rocks that are actually intersecting with, let's say the wall of the sky dome, um, which is the reason for that is to yeah, to have them block the view as well um, on the sky dome uh, itself so so you're not seeing the edge where the floor is moving up because that usually has distortion yeah i think that's about it for the approach i took to uh, create the rocks this will be fine-tuned later on when we create the camera animation i think that's that's fine so far so if you have any questions uh, to the approach uh, please let me know in the comments yeah, I hope you liked it. Uh, leave a, thum a thumbs up and uh, subscribe and hit the notification button if you don't want to miss the next videos. Uh, with that being said, um, have a great weekend or whatever. Whenever you're watching this video, have a great day. And yeah, see you next time. Thank you.